Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're talking about how to strike an arc when you're stick welding. It can be super frustrating, especially in the beginning, but the reality is nothing can happen until you strike an arc. So you might as well face it head on, learn how to do it, and I'm gonna show you how right now. All right, so why do you need to strike an arc to begin with? Well, when you're welding, what happens is you need electricity or electrons to flow between your workpiece and your welding rod, right? And so in doing that, that creates a bunch of heat, it melts your metal, and that creates your weld. Well, the voltage isn't high enough in your welding machine to be able to bridge that gap just by getting close to it, right? So you need to actually contact the metal core of the electrode or the tip there uh, to the workpiece to start the flow of electrons. And then after you do that, it does something that's called ionizing the air. And that makes it so that the electric arc can flow through the air there, creating your heat. Now, why is this a challenge? Because when you go to do it, it creates some heat right off the bat and you've contacted the electrode and then it can stick and it's stuck there. So how do you do this? How do you touch the end of your rod to your workpiece without sticking it together? Well, the traditional explanations are you either strike like a match, sliding it across, or you tap your electrode. However, I think there are really only two important things to consider. I don't know that what I do matches either one of those descriptions. It's probably kind of a combination of both. But the two things that are important is you need to be gentle as you touch it down. You don't want to slam it down in there because then you're going to slam it in. It'll stop for a second and then it'll be stuck. Right. The other is you need to always keep moving. Right. You don't want to be coming in and holding still. That's when it'll get stuck. So you just need to be moving whether you're striking an arc or whether you're tapping and just be gentle about it and it'll work out pretty well. Now let's just touch on your settings. I'll just say that if your amperage is set too low, you're gonna be more likely to stick. And while you're practicing and first learning this, I'd probably set my amperage to the high end of the range of what your electrode can handle. So now let's put the whole process together. The place that you strike your arc is really important, right? Because you don't want those arc strikes to be visible outside of the weld zone. Now, from a structural perspective, those can be points where a crack can start, but overall, it just looks bad and sloppy. You strike an arc here where you're gonna weld over, and then after you do one of those motions, right, where you tap, you strike an arc just gently, and once the electricity started to flow and you see that bright light, right, you're pulling it back a ways immediately, and I'll hold right around a quarter inch or a six millimeter gap, right? And I do that only for one to two seconds, and that lets my rod heat up, and while I'm holding that gap, I'm moving back to where the beginning of the weld is, and then I'm gonna move my electrode down in to where I'll hold a really small arc gap as I weld along, and that'll help me to have great control as I weld. Now, once I'm at the start and I have my small arc gap, I'll go ahead and let it fill in there at the beginning and start to travel along. And that's the process that you go through, right? You strike up where you're gonna weld over, hold it long, move back to the start, move in close, and then you're in business and you're welding. So in order to get really good at that, a good thing to do is to practice over and over again. I'm gonna show you a drill that you can do to help you just overcome this, get that muscle memory down so it's no longer an issue. Just take some uh, material, it can be scrap metal, whatever you've got, then draw some little about one inch or 25 millimeter long lines on it. And that's enough length that you can go through that whole process we talked about striking an arc, getting established at the front and welding along. And do that again and again and again and again. And doing these short welds gets you a lot of practice in a short period of time. Let me show you one more thing while you're at this. As you come to the end of the weld, it's a good idea to just get in the habit of coming to the end, moving back just slightly, and letting a little bit of filler metal fill in the end so you don't end up with a crater there uh, as you finish your weld. Let me show you one other issue that can come up with certain electrodes, especially with a rod called 7018, which happens to be my favorite electrode to run. Now, after you weld with 7018, it can get a coating of slag over the end of the electrode, and this will insulate it so that you can't actually strike an arc very easily, right? And so you can try to tap on it and beat on it, and finally, at some point, you'll break through, but you might not get what you want. You might end up sticking your electrode anyway, so it's better to just prepare the electrode, kind of like it is when it comes, so that the center rod is visible 
and it can touch the weld metal and go ahead and strike an arc. And there are a couple of ways to do that. One is you can just use a file to clean up the end of your electrode like that. It's not too big of a deal. Another, you can use some sandpaper, maybe stick it to your work table. Another way you can handle this is as you finish a weld, rather than coming out gently, you can get in the habit of flicking your rod out to the side. Any slag that's on there is gonna fly off. Then all you need to do is take your glove and crunch any flux down that's around the outside and it'll be in pretty good shape. All right, so now that's everything you need to know. You can get out there in your garage or your shop, take a few minutes, some focused practice. After you've got the hang of that, check out the description below where I've linked a whole bunch of videos with other tips, things that you can focus on going forward to help you continue to learn welding and up your game there. So if you like this video, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below. We'll see you next time.